Okay, how's everybody doing today? This is Rich Harsha, and we are here for our Insiders Open Forum. And let me just make sure that everything is rolling here. Okay, yep, we're good to go. Okay, I have uh, a few things that are... Um, that have been uh, uh, submitted by John. So John, can you just give me a confirmation that you can hear me okay? Uh, in fact, um, if it's okay, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you, John. Is that all right? I'd, it, it'd be better if you could just ask me these questions and we could have a conversation instead of me just spewing some stuff. Let me see. This is gonna, might be a little bit tricky because I see you're on a voice over IP. Sometimes that doesn't connect super okay. So I'm going to try it here. Here we go. John, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Rich. Okay, we got a, just a little bit of feedback, um, but it, it's, it's very passable. So we'll go ahead and roll with this. So you got a bunch of questions here. That's good. That's what we're here for. Um, you've got three different things. Where do you want to start? You want to start at the top? Yeah, we can start at the top. Okay, you, you need to tell me what you mean by this. What are your thoughts on faith and marketing? Is that more of a spiritual kind of a faith, or is that a, a faith in marketing working, or what is that? Like a spiritual kind of faith. Spiritual faith. Well, tell me what prompts that question, because I'm not quite sure where to go with the answer until I have a better feel for what you're trying to get at. Well, I, uh, I'm thinking about companies that use, like, the fish symbol or – uh, an expression of their faith or uh, in, in their marketing, in ads, in general? Do you think it's, uh, it's a good, it's, I mean, it's, I generally think it's a good idea to have spiritual faith, but <clears throat> whether or not to, whether or not how to use it in marketing, if at all, or whether to keep it personal and just let business be business kind of thing is, I guess, my question. Yeah, so the first thing on that topic is I'd want to make sure that the community you're in was, generally speaking, uh, I, I'm going to assume you're talking Christian faith. Is that a fair enough assumption? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to, I mean, you, you know, you never know. I, I'm going to assume that there's uh, – I'm going to make sure that the community at large is – is pretty strongly Christian, and that's going to vary by by region and even by city and town. So there's some places certainly in the, um, gosh, I don't know, I don't even want to get into that discussion, but just you, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. If you're in an area like that where overall, by and large, there's a overwhelming majority of people that are Christians, churchgoers, et cetera. I live in the Dallas area. That kind of thing is pretty common. I mean, it, yeah. it, there's churches on every corner. So, you know, I wouldn't hesitate in, in an area like this. If you're in an area that's a little less that way, then that, that could be a problem. Because then you start getting people that are cynical, right? And people that start saying, oh, well, what a jerk. They're just trying to, you know, you know, be a Jesus fish to get me to do business with them or whatever. But I, I've seen a lot of companies do really well with this. Um, one of our clients, in fact, is uh, runs, this, runs this very, very uh, – Definitively, I'm going to pull up his website so I can just give you a quick look, see, okay? Okay. But I'm also going to show you this. I'm going to show you how he integrates this whole thing. Okay. This is uh, one of our clients, Danny Peterson. Let me unpause my screen here. And you'll see here he goes with it very right up front. Integrity built on the golden rule. He's got the fish underneath the, that. It's in the logo built on the golden rule. He's got Matthew and Zig Ziglar quoted on the top. And his company name is Integrity. And you look uh, down here in his uh, is it identity, and we get into this whole idea of, you know, here's what integrity means. And it's not necessarily just, you know, just faith based but it's it's very heavily integrated and if you look at his about about us page you know it starts to talk about his faith a little bit okay so I, I think it can be done very well if uh, if it's 
it's truly who you are and it's how you feel and it's a big part of what you're all about, then I really don't have much of a problem with it. I think that the people that, that gravitate towards it will gravitate towards it very strongly. I think there will be a, a larger percentage of people that look at it fairly neutrally, and I think there will be a small percentage of people that look at it negatively. And you just got to know that and not worry too much about it. You've got to you know, know your market and go after your market. It also gives you enhanced credibility if you start advertising on uh, Christian radio. Not, I'm not telling you to do that, but if you do, it gives you some enhanced credibility. So I don't have a big problem with it. I think it, it can be done right. But I, I kind of like what this guy has done. He's integrated it into the fabric of his company. He hasn't just thrown the fish on there and kind of left it hanging there without any explanation. He's, he's explained what it is and how he does it and why he does it. And, uh, you know, I know, I've known Danny for a lot of years now, and he does very well with this. He's got a thriving company. So any follow-up questions on that? Uh, no, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's pretty good as far as that question goes. Yeah. So my, my main, uh, advice to you would be either go with it or don't, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, 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 don't dip a toe in the water. Just, uh, let it rip. Okay. Well, you see where we're out here in the Northwest and we're in a part of Portland that, I mean, Portland's, it's a, Politically, I would say it's probably, you know, a mix, but it's it's it could be uh, termed liberal, and right where we're at, I could probably, even though I have those values, probably have a pretty good success even um, marketing to, uh, like for instance, there's I get solicited by the the gay gay and lesbian yellow pages, you know to to advertise with them all the time and it's just like I think I think like you're saying if it's part of your fabric if, it, fabric if it's really who you are then it can be tastefully done but if you're trying to just target you know certain markets without without having to be having to be a part of who you are then it's probably not the best idea you know, another thing you can do is you can create an About Us page that explains how your faith influences the way that you do business. And, you know, I, I think that uh, I think a lot of people would respect that, even if they don't b believe that same way. Um, I, I think there's some opportunities there. You know, people at the end of the day, they want to do business with people, and they want to do business with people that they trust. So, in other words, they don't want to do business with a company. When you go into Best Buy, you're doing business with a company. You're not doing business with a person. But it's a little bit different because you're buying a television. And you're not even really buying a television. You're buying a Sony or a Samsung. <clears throat> and so those kinds of, those kinds of uh, <clears throat> purchases are, tend to be more brand-driven and, and company-driven. But on this kind of a thing with home improvements and contractors and services and things like that, you know, people are doing business with people, and they want to know who they are. And you, you go to you go to a chiropractor, you're going to a person, not to a big brand in most cases. You go to your dentist, you're going to the dentist that you like and the person that you know and those kinds of things. So I, I think that the more you can show your true you, and if your true you is heavily influenced by your Christian beliefs, then I don't think it's a problem to put it in there. Okay. If, uh, if you're... If your uh, true you is not heavily influenced by your Christian beliefs, then I, I would, probably wouldn't put it in there. Now, that being said, if your true you is heavily influenced by your Christian beliefs, you don't necessarily have to put that in to your website and say, hey, I'm heavily influenced by my Christian beliefs. You can, you can actually do that in a more subtle way <clears throat> by talking about who you are and w the way you think. And you, you talk more about the fruits of your faith, not the faith itself. You know, treating people a certain way and doing things and having, you know, a certain type of integrity and, and giving examples of times when you've done things the right way. You know, I, I wrote an ad recently, it was in one of the blog postings that we did recently about um, a company called uh, Energy Swing Windows owned by a guy named Steve Renenkamp. And I don't know if Steve Renenkamp is Christian or not. I, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that he was, but he doesn't say he is on his website. He has never told me that he is, but he, I helped him write this fantastic advertorial about a time when he 
uh, messed up a client's order and then it got messed up again and then some things that were out of his control that caused some extreme frustration with that client and he went in and he and he refunded all their money and he did the job anyway and it ended up costing him $8,000 out of his pocket to do the right thing. Now, you know, I don't know where that comes from and I'm not saying you have to be a Christian to be that kind of a person to do that kind of a thing. But let's say that you were a Christian and this is called the fruits of your belief, not your belief, right? Right. Is that you treat people like that. So I think there's different ways to approach it is I guess what I'm saying. And I would go as far as you're comfortable. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Next question you had was ideas for gathering accolades. Why don't you help me out with that? What are you thinking? Well, um, in, in, uh, gathering together the, the things for our website, um, I, I think I think actually that I've got a kind of a follow-on to that question is we we belong to Angie's List or we belong to Angela Angie's List we we were a service provider and then that morphed into uh, garnering uh, enough reviews and then eventually they uh, um, approached us and asked us if we would like to participate in their uh, special group of special people that show up at the top of the list, you know, and for a minimal fee of seven hundred dollars a month, we we could we could be in the uh, in this section with ten, ten to twelve other window contractors in our area, and I did that for a while, and then it kind of dwindled, but I guess. I guess when it comes to Angie's List, BBB, uh, local uh, home, uh, like we got uh, Nary, of course, and then uh, um, what is it, uh, the Oregon Remodelers Association, um, and those aren't necessarily accolades, correct? Those are more professional associations. Yeah, those are professional associations, but I, I would I would uh, look at each of those organizations that you're members of and see what kind of awards and accolades that they offer, because most of them do. They'll have some sort of thing. You know, the BBB's got the Torch Award, and uh, I don't know what Nary has, but a lot of these organizations are going to have awards that they hand out. So make sure that you're aware of them and that you apply for them. Frequently, it's as easy as applying. I'll tell you another one that is almost just as easy as applying. Uh, let me ask you this, John. What what are your annual sales revenues approximately? Oh, about a half a million right now. Half a million. Okay, that might be a little bit on the small end. When you start getting in the million range, it, it, it's almost a shoe-in to be listed on the uh, qualified remodeler top 500 list. Yeah, yeah. You just have to apply. Most people don't do it because they don't know. And so there's an accolade. Another thing that you might want to do is this. This is just sort of a random idea that, that could be helpful for you. Is uh, understand that in your local area that there's local news outlets that are always looking for stories. And you think, well, I don't know that we're really newsworthy. I'm not sure why people would want to you know, put us on the news or whatever. But before you even think about that, just realize this. There are people whose jobs depend on finding interesting things to put in the news, whether it's the local edition of a newspaper there in your local town. You know, I live in a town here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area called South Lake, and I think it's every Friday a newspaper for the South Lake something. I don't even know what it's called, but it shows up in our mailbox. And it's the kind of newspaper that tells what happened in the city council meeting and the school board meeting and the high school sports are covered and new businesses that open. Th that type of a newspaper, you with me? Yeah, yeah. You know, we've got the much larger Dallas Morning News that would never be interested in your local remodeling company here in South Lake in a million years. But you've got this South Lake paper that is starving for editorial content. So what you need to do is you need to look at it and, and think a couple of different ways. Way number one is what is something that we can do or have done or could do that would be interesting enough to be featured in the paper. And that could be something like uh, putting together some sort of a fundraising thing or a charity thing that you do for somebody. It could be doing a giveaway of remodeling services and you, you chose, 
you know, the guy that just came back from serving in the military and he, you know, was missing part of his leg and his, you know, he was struggling. And so you came in and, you know, remodeled his bathroom to make it easier for him, whatever. You know, I, I don't know what it yeah. is. No, I got you. I'm following. But these are things that the these local newspapers would love to report on and talk about. Mm -hmm. And so you let them know, say, hey, you know, I don't know if this is interesting to you or not, but here's something that we're doing. And they might come back to you and say, well, you know, that's really self-serving. That's, you know, clearly you're just trying to get publicity. But you really got to understand their point of view, which is, hey, we're looking for any kind of information on anything. They've got to fill pages. They've got to fill space. That's what people are buying. And uh, you'll notice that in that example, I, I, I quickly went to things that small town newspapers love to talk about. The veteran that came back and had his leg amputated. And you gave him a new bathroom that was easy to get in and out of the shower or whatever, right? Yeah. Start asking around and looking for these situations, okay? Um, okay. Or if there's some sort of interesting product or thing that you do or some sort of unique uh, thing that you can build or pro provide or produce, then that might be something worth talking about. And they could write a story about that. Another thing you might want to think about, this is harder and takes longer. I mean, all of these things take a little bit of time. But the great thing about any media coverage or accolades that you can get is you can leverage it for a long time in the future. So if, if, if they run an article about you helping the veteran in the paper, that, that, that has a very minimal impact the day that it runs. And trust me, this is true. I, I, I had a big article written about me. Oh, gosh, about 11 or 12 years ago, one in the Dallas Morning News Sunday business section and another one in Inc. Magazine, and nobody saw it, okay? <laughs> nobody sees these things. But you have the ability to now take it and show it to people over and over again for the rest of forever. That's the real value in those things, okay? But another thing you might want to do that's even a little bit more difficult is you might want to look at your business and your company and what you do and what your expertise is and start thinking in terms of, um, maybe a monthly article on the topic that you could write and submit to that newspaper that they would post as editorial content. And of course it couldn't be a sales pitch and it couldn't be something that was just blatantly designed to get you business. W what, what business are you in? Uh, windows and doors. Windows and doors. Okay. So you look at that and say, okay, home remodeling, windows and doors, energy efficiency, these kinds of topics, what could you put together? that would help people understand. Maybe you put together an article on uh, the right kind of windows for the Portland climate. Maybe right. you put together another one for, you know, seven energy saving tips around your home that you probably hadn't thought of. You know, most people think to change the light bulbs in, from incandescence to fluorescence, but most people don't realize that you can do this, 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 and this. And maybe some of them has to do with the air conditioning, and maybe some of them has to do with you know, stuff that you don't have any, it's not directly related to your business, but that's okay because you're just trying to establish yourself as an expert, okay? Right, so maybe some DIY articles about telling people how to uh, accomplish some simple tasks themselves, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, you know, seven ways to uh, spruce up your house for, you know, less than $100. Yeah. You know, yeah. go online and research these kinds of topics. Let your mind wander beyond windows and doors and include the whole idea of the home, okay? Now, you don't want to get too far outside of windows and doors, but, you know, give yourself some ability to establish yourself as an expert. I think energy efficiency is a good area for you to stay in. I think... Uh, making your home aesthetically pleasing because that's what windows and doors can do, you know, and, and put together a half a dozen articles and then submit them over to the newspaper and say, hey, I don't know if you're ever looking for expert columns like this, but I've written some and, you know, this might be worthwhile to you. What do you think? Okay. But what you, what you don't want to do is go to them and say, hey, would you be interested in me writing you some articles? That, it's really easy to say, well, no. It's a lot harder to look at the article, see that they're there, see the diversity of topics, see that they're not just self-serving plugs, see that the, int the, the content actually is interesting, and to say, wow, this is really great. We'd love to have stuff like this. Okay? Okay. Right. It's a little bit harder to do. I know that, and I'm not suggesting, hey, here's the easiest thing in the world to do, but it's, 
it's a great strategy. It really is. I, I highly recommend it. It takes time and effort, but it's worth it to pay off for you. Plus, it'll give you fantastic links to your website from their news website to your website that will help your SEO rankings tremendously. So what about Angie's List? What about it? Well, to pay or not to pay? Well, you know, so here's the pros and the cons of Angie's List. First of all, the pros. The, the people that are on Angie's List are very um, loyal to it, and they're sort of raving fans, and they, they form a very loyal type of a community. So I think there's a lot of positives there. Um, the negatives are that they only – cater to their own community. So the 99% of people that are not Angie's List members never see your rankings, never see your scores, they don't ever see anything about it. So it doesn't really help much for the 99%. Now that doesn't mean that it can't be worth it for the 1% or 2% that are members, uh, but I think you've already done the right thing. You, you went down that road, you gave them some money, you evaluated the returns, and you made a decision accordingly. I think that's the best thing to do. Okay. I mean, I, I don't really think I can give you a standard answer, yes, go pay Angie's List that money, or no, don't go pay Angie's List that money. I think my advice should be more generic because I think situations will differ from person to person, from community to community, from section of Angie's List to sections of Angie's List, and it's simply a matter of testing. I, I, I most definitely wouldn't get involved in a long-term contract with them before you had a good feel for how well it would work. Okay. Okay, how about in the BBB? Same thing. Same thing, okay. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, I mean, it's just, again, I would. the only thing I'd really caution you against is long-term contracts before you have any feel for what what's going to happen. They're just a one-time deal, you know, you pay annually. Uh, yep, that's then, probably okay. How much is it? It's 450 bucks. then you're, in, you're accredited. But it's to me, it's like we had locally here. We had a couple of companies that were that were really not good companies that were a accredited. They just paid for the accreditation, you know, and used it for marketing. But yeah, but you got to understand the people that are that are your prospective clients. They really don't know any of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know that there's crummy companies. They don't know what it really means. But it can be comforting them to see it. You know, I don't know how many leads that will get you from people that go to the BBB website, find you, and then contact you as a result of your membership. Um, I mean, if it's four hundred fifty dollars a year, then the answer is well, one per year is plenty, right? <laughs> yeah, one small job it pays off. You know, to, yeah. On the other hand, if you just put it on your website and people see it and they feel good about it, you know, one of the things that we'll do with you is is on your website where you put the Better Business Bureau. We'll have a section on your on your reputation page, where instead of just having the logo, we'll say, "Here's what the BBB is. Here's what the A plus rating means. Here's how they make their their uh, uh, determinations, and here's how we rate it, and here's how you can click to see that on their website." So it becomes a a powerful piece of social proof if if positioned properly. Okay. All right. Um... Now, your last question had to do with scripts. Yeah. Okay, and it says, for people that don't have much experience in windows and doors, how do you deal with the homeowners who want technical information? Why don't you talk me through those questions a little bit again? Well, so you've got, you've got people in the office that are answering the phones and, and hopefully setting appointments. And do you, how do you, uh, I mean, we get, we have people that are do calling. You want, do you want my speech. real opinion on this or do you want the easy to swallow opinion? No, no, I want your real opinion. <laughs> well, because the, the real opinion is really hard to execute. Okay. Yeah. It's really hard to execute. And I know this because we execute it to the best of our ability at our company and it's hard. Yeah. And here's what the real advice is. The real advice is that every person that calls you, here's the, we'll start with the ideal and then we'll go to what's realistic, okay? Every person that calls your company or sends in a request for information from your company should be on the phone talking to an actual qualified, educated salesperson 
within 30 seconds. Okay? Now that's hard, and I understand that. Logistically, it's a nightmare. But it's the best thing, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, you got to understand why somebody would call you. And that seems like kind of a stupid thing to say, well, of course they'd call me because they're interested. But you got to think about that in a little bit more detail. Why would somebody call? Tell me, why would somebody call you? Oh, man, we get calls for uh, – because – I have the word repair on my website and have for a long time. Okay, People... I'm not worried about that guy. Why would somebody who's actually qualified call you? Well, because they just they want more they want information. No, they don't want more information. That is not why they would call. I'm going to tell you why they would call. First of all, I'm going to tell you why they wouldn't call. People would not call who were casually interested in the topic. You know why? Because it's an understood truism that they're going to get nailed by a salesperson, okay? Okay. So you don't just casually call remodeling company. I was thinking about maybe remodeling my kitchen. What do you think about that remodeling company? Is there somebody that could just kind of walk me through some steps just casually over the phone because that's all I want right now? That's not why people call a remodeling company for kitchens. In your case, windows. They call because they want to buy. But they're hesitant to call because they don't know. They're not educated. They don't know how much it's going to cost. They don't know what the process is. There's all these unknown things that make them scared. And I'm telling you this because I want you to understand that if they overcome all of those hesitations and fears and they call anyway, they're pretty freaking serious. You know, <laughs> yes, you're going to get the guy who – whoops. Yes, you're going to get the guy who uh, only – gosh dang it. Hang on just one second. You're going to get the guy that just wants you to come fix the cracked glass and all that kind of stuff. I get that. Uh, I'm not worried about that guy because you're going to tell that guy to hit the road no matter who, who calls, who he talks to, right? Right. I'm worried about that guy who actually is interested. And here's what needs to happen. When that guy calls in, you need to start selling him right there on the spot, on the phone. Because you know what's going to happen if you don't? He's Here's what's going to happen. Yeah. He's going to call other people. He's going to see other people. He's going to get other opinions, and he may or may not end up buying from you. He may not even end up ever seeing you. So here's what I want to have happen. Guy calls in, and he goes, yeah, I was calling. I saw, saw your ad. I saw your website, or my friend told me about you. However he ended up on your website, however he ended up with your phone number, and he says, yeah, I was just talking to you. you know, I, just, I just wanted to you know, call and see about Windows. Now, typically what you're going to say is, Oh, okay, great. You know, we'd be happy to come over and show you some stuff. And the guy goes, Oh, okay. You know, when's a good time? Tomorrow at seven o'clock. Okay, great. Will your wife be there? She will. Okay, fantastic. Okay, great. We'll see you at seven. Pretty typical appointment set, right? Yeah. What does that guy know when he gets off the phone with you? He just knows you're coming over. That's it. He knows that some random dude is going to show up tomorrow night with a sledgehammer. That's what he knows. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> How about this? Uh, t tell me, what was your name again? John. Oh, hey, great, John. My name is Rich. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Hey, how did you find out about us? Oh, I saw you on the website. Really? Well, I had you looking at our website today. Well, I, I, you know, my windows need to be replaced. Okay, fantastic. Interesting. Let me ask you this. Have you been looking for long, or have you, did you just get online? Have you been thinking about this for a long time? What's the situation? Now, if John in this example starts being really short with me, then he's got some issues that are unresolved. He may not really be in the mood for an appointment. He may not want to talk to somebody. He may be in a hurry, but I'm going to find that out pretty darn quick. More likely than not, here's what he's going to do. He's going to find out, hey, this person's actually willing to talk to me and give me some information and help me out a little bit on the phone. I want to talk to this person. The majority of your true prospects, they're going to open up and start talking to you. So how long have you been thinking about this? Oh, geez, you, so you, you had some fogged windows for a couple years. Are, are they hard to operate? Really? How, long, how old is your home? 25 years? How old are the windows? Do you know? They're original to the home? Or what are the frames made out of? Are they aluminum? Are they vinyl? Do you know? Are they wood? They're, they're aluminum? They're vinyl? Oh, okay, they're vinyl. 
Okay, so what's make now? Why now? Why are you calling now? Okay, because of this problem. Okay, interesting. Have you talked to any other window companies? You have? What they tell you? Really? Did they give you a price? Have you seen them? Did they come out to your house? Okay. Well, hey, let me just tell you something. You know, I, you're on my website, right? So you, you probably already saw this, but I just want you to know something. You see there on our website where it says blah, 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 blah? Yeah, I want you to know that that's really the honest to goodness truth. That's what we do, and that's who we are. Okay, so a lot of companies are going to do blah, 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 and blah, and they're going to also do this and blah and blah. But when you do business with us, the reason that our customers love us is because we blah, blah, and we blah, and we blah, blah, blah. Now, the blahs are whatever your identity is. Okay, I don't right. know what your identity is. It doesn't matter what your identity is. You just fill in the blahs, right? <laughs> and we're also setting ourselves apart from the other companies. You know, one of the things that you can expect from other companies is, their sales pitches are generally two to three hours. Did you know that, John? Yeah, it's true. Have you had anybody out? Do you, do you have any appointments with anyone else? You do? Well, let me tell you what's going to happen. If you don't mind me asking, who is that company that you're going to see? Oh, it's uh, Davis Windows. Yeah, I know those guys. Dave Davidson, he's a, he's a pretty good guy. Yeah, you know, they've got pretty good windows. Uh, i got no problem with their windows. Uh, I mean, they're, you know, you probably think I'm partial, but I think ours are actually better. But they've got a pretty good window. But, you know, one of the things that's going to happen is when their salesman comes over, he's going to be sitting in your house for about two or three hours. The reason they're going to do that is they're going to do what's called a warm-up. So they're going to try to get to know you. And then they're going to do a product demonstration. And that product demonstration is going to take a good hour and 15 minutes all by itself. Then they're going to go through a round of concern answering, okay? And then they're going to do this. And then they're going to do this. Then they're going to give you a price. And that price is going to be about 15 to 30% higher than they actually want you to spend. Then they're going to give you a discount, and then they're going to give you a second discount. But that second discount is only going to be good if you buy it today. Okay? Now, you know, I'm not saying that they're dishonest or it's immoral or anything like that. I'm not saying that they don't have, you know, a decent price at the end of that presentation. But it takes two and a half, three hours. You know what? Our presentation takes generally – the window demonstration takes about 15 minutes. Now we get to know you and we ask you some questions. You get a chance to ask us some questions. And generally we're in and out about 45 to 60 minutes, something like that. I don't know. It, 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 it's taken as little as 20 minutes and as much as an hour and a half if you have you know, a lot of questions. But it's usually about 45 minutes. And you, we're going to give you a price and then you can do business with us if you want. If you think it's a good value, I think you will. Now, here's what's happening right now. <clears throat> We're having a conversation. Do you notice this? Mm -hmm. I'm not reading a script. I'm not having. I'm not memorizing anything. I'm just telling the guy what the freaking deal is, and I'm doing it in a conversational way. And he's sitting there listening. And guess what he's doing while he's sitting there listening? He's eating it freaking up. And that conversation is different, depending on the answers he gives me. Have you had anybody else out to give you a quote? No, you haven't. Are you gonna? You know, you're thinking about calling some other guys. Is your policy to get three bids? Yeah, here's some of the things that you might find when you get somebody else out there. Most of these guys are going to want about three hours. Most of these guys, blah, blah, blah. Most of these guys are going to play these pricing games. So here's some of the things that you're going to find. Some guys are going to sell you on trying to sell you fiberglass or uh, wood windows. Now, let me tell you about that. Do you know the difference between fiberglass windows, wood windows, and vinyl windows, John? You don't? Uh, no. Well, here, let me explain it to you real quick. See, fiberglass windows are blah, blah, blah. They're a great window, but no, I'm going back to you, John, on this call. Do you, what, what kind of windows do you sell? Oh, fiberglass. <laughs> okay, so I'll pretend like I'm you. Do, you. do you know the difference? Now, see, here's the thing. About 90% of all the companies that sell windows sell vinyl windows. Now, do you know what vinyl is? Well, yeah, it's vinyl, right? Well, here's another word for vinyl. It's plastic, okay? Now, you know, it's a good material to make, you know, cups out of and, you know, lawn furniture, I guess. I don't know. It's yeah. really not the best material in the world to make windows out of, but a lot of companies do. Now, why do you think a lot of companies make windows out of plastic or vinyl? I, you know, I'm asking you a question. Well, I don't know. Well, let me tell you. Two reasons. Reason number one, it's very, very easy to mold into any shape you want. So it's easy to make it into a window, okay? It's easy to work with. 
But here's the other reason. Here's the real reason. It's cheap. I mean, how much yeah. do you think it costs to put a bunch of plastic into that vinyl, vinyl window mold? The answer is in a given window that retails for about six to seven hundred dollars. That's the typical price of a vinyl window. There's generally about a dollar seventy to two dollars and fifty cents worth of vinyl or plastic in it. It's cheap. That's good. That's real good. Now they got to make. I mean, they got to make the mold, and that costs money. I understand that. I'm not saying that it's a two dollar window being sold for for seven hundred dollars. <laughs> Obviously, that's not right. But I'm just letting you know, it's about two dollars worth of plastic in there. Now the problem with plastic is that you know we're up here in the northwest, and it's just you know it really doesn't matter where you are, but you know the the climate changes and it contracts and usually anywhere from about one to five, sometimes as much as ten. I don't know. It just depends on the window and the situation. But it starts to warp. It starts to warp. And when it starts to warp, it starts to let air in. The energy efficiency goes out the window. You know, they don't look as good. It's just, it's not a good material. Now, all I'm doing is I'm just having a conversation with you where I'm just selling my window. I'm so just really, making the guy want it right now on the phone. Why would so I good. wait until I get over there three days later to sell him crap? When he called me, <laughs> there is no time he will ever want to buy windows more than the time he got the courage to call. Rich? What? So... <clears throat> This is really good, but I, I guess I'm assuming that now the the person that took the call has pat has located a trained salesperson in less than thirty seconds, and that's the conversations going on right now between you know. So here's what you've got to decide: <clears throat> Are you willing to allow the hottest prospects that you'll ever get to potentially go? cold in the hopes that you'll be able to resuscitate them and see them with the trained salesperson later? Or are you going to logistically figure out how to put that person on the phone with them right up front? Now, it might kind of sound like I'm advocating just selling the guy over the phone. And you might be thinking, well, that's impossible. You can't sell a guy over the phone anyway. Number one, yeah, actually you could. But number two, that's actually not what I'm advocating. What I'm advocating is get the guy to the point where he says to you and to himself, holy crap, i got to buy windows from this guy. And then when right. you show up, he's, he's, he's there to you know, show me the window. And guess what he's going to do? Oh, yeah, look at that. It's a freaking piece of crap plastic window. That sucks. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, because when I initially talked to you, I told you about Rodney Webb, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. And he wants to... <clears throat> he wants you to kind of save everything for the in-home presentation, and then you have the pre-positioning package, which I actually like because you're right. It's like you gotta you gotta get out there in the lead as quickly as possible because it's it's competitive, you know. Well, you know what as quickly as possible is what? It's not tonight at seven o'clock. It's not tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock. It's right now when he calls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why would that person not be willing to have that conversation with you when he calls? That's the best time. Because, he, yeah, he's already said I've got time enough to devote to calling, so he's got time, yeah. yeah. So you take Good. your identity and you look at it and you say, okay, what are the things that we do well? What's our identity, both our company and our product? And you get those in the mouth of a person that can – and here's the interesting thing. Did you notice when I was going through that script it didn't feel like I was selling? No. I was just telling a guy stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's really what selling is. It's, it's just telling a guy stuff. Yeah, so, you know, are there any other companies that you've been looking at or are you thinking about calling? Well, you know, I've heard the – I heard the commercial for Window World. Okay, good. Anyone else? Notice what I didn't do. I didn't say, oh, you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> well, who else? Oh, well, you know, I've heard a lot of ads for that uh, statewide remodeling. That's a, that's a big name here in the local area. Okay, yeah, those are both really good companies. Those are really good companies. You know, the problem with Window World is, you know, 
they, they, they sell a good window, but have, have you ever seen their ads for $189? Did you know that that window is actually illegal to sell in Texas? Yeah, here's why, because it doesn't have low E coatings. Now, that's an energy efficiency coating that's required. You, you can actually sell that window in the state of Texas, but you can't install it. Now, an individual can install it themselves, but they advertise it because of the low price, and people call, and they know that they can't actually sell it and install it, but they advertise it because what they're really trying to do is get people to upsell to a different window. And if you call them, they'll set the appointment with you. They'll come over to your home. And this is part of the reason why their appointment takes three hours. So if you've got to take you from the $189 window to the window that's generally about five to $600. And the reason they do that is because it's just a way to get in your house. Now, I don't know. If, I mean, maybe you like doing business. Do you like doing business like that, John? No. I don't like doing business like that. I mean, to me, I find it offensive that people would bait and switch me like that. And I'm just going to call it what it is. It's a bait and switch, okay? At the end of the bait and switch, you get a lot higher price than you thought. Now the price is still fair, five to six hundred dollars, but it's still not a very good window. It's still vinyl. It's still in a you know, warp and it's made out of plastic. Now statewide, they've got some really good windows. They've got some really high-end wood windows. Have you ever thought about wood windows? No. The wood windows look fantastic for some homes, especially historic homes. They're the only thing you really should be looking at. I mean, I don't have any, and I wouldn't be a good, good uh, source for you for wood windows. Do you have a historic home? You don't? Oh. Guess what? Most people don't, right? Okay. Yeah, wood windows, they're a total pain in the butt. you got to paint them all the time. They warp. I mean, they rot. No, I, I wouldn't do that. But the fiberglass, you know, they don't have that at statewide. They've got vinyl and they've got wood. Or maybe they got a fiberglass, you know, whatever. I don't know what, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so here's the deal. John, I just need probably about, I don't know, 45 minutes. When's a good time to come over and I'll, I'll show you the window? It just takes a minute. I mean, I, I'm not going to go through every – unless you're an – are you an engineer, John? Do you want to go through every last detail of the window? Because I can do it. Here's what you need to know at the end of the day. We sell the best window. It's a fiberglass window. It's – what is it, Marvin? Yeah, Marvin. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the Infinity by Marvin window. I mean, you can go research it online. It's, it's one of the highest rated windows on the planet, fiberglass. It's got this, 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 and this advantage. That's the one we sell. I'm going to tell you right now it's going to be a lot more expensive than the vinyl windows, Okay. It just is. No different than a, a really nice car that's good is going to be more expensive than a crummy car that's not. I mean, that's just the deal. At, at the end of the day, if that's a problem, just let me know. It's not, it won't offend me. It's not for everybody. Does that sound like something you want to look at? Perfect. <clears throat> yeah, you know, we could actually – let me ask you this, John. I'm talking to John, the customer, not John you. How much did you have in mind to spend on this on a monthly basis if you're going to, you know, do it on payments? And then John says one of two things. He either says, oh, well, I was just going to pay cash. Or he says, oh, well, you know, I, I don't know. Or, you know, I don't know, a few hundred dollars a month. So he's going to either give you permission to have that discussion about financing or he's going to tell you he doesn't want it. Right on the phone. Great. So two, three hundred dollars. Let me tell you this, John. I'm going to tell you this. You can go get vinyl windows anywhere. There's plenty of them for sale. Okay. And it's going to be it's going to be less money. You know, you're going to have these problems I just talked about. By the way, did, did I mention that they look like freaking garbage? It looks like putting a lawn chair in your freaking window. <laughs> anyway, whatever. <laughs> but I want you to know this. Now, by the way, all the people listening to this call that sell vinyl windows, you, you realize we could have the same conversation the other direction, and we frequently do. Okay, I'm an attorney. I represent the case of my clients. But in this case, I would say you, you, you realize that if your budget is $250 to $300 a month, we can get you the, the – I mean, we've got the premium top of the line, but we can get you a good, solid fiberglass window – that's going to have our solid lifetime warranty, includes glass breakage warranty. I mean, if, if your kid hits a golf ball through it, we're going to come out and fix the glass for free. I mean, it's not going to cost you anything. You know, it's, it's 17 years from now. It doesn't matter. That's what we're going to do. And we can do that for $299 a month or less. I mean, maybe as low as $219. I mean, does that sound doable to you? Is there anything that would keep you from doing that? Okay, because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over to your house, and here's what the process is like. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to count how many windows you need. Maybe you can tell me right now how many windows do you need. Because t here's the little secret most people don't know. It doesn't matter how big your window is. 
because all windows are about the same price from the manufacturer. They're measured in what's called united inches, which is the essentially the, 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 the length times the height. And most windows are about 100 united inches or less. And even if they're a little bit bigger, they only cost minimally more. So really all I need to do is just count the number of windows you need. I'm going to bring with me uh, a contract. And it's kind of a scary word, a contract, but it's just an agreement to buy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the price filled in because we don't play the pricing games. And I'm going to... I'm going to go over with you how much they are. I'm going to give you a couple of options that you can buy that will make it a little bit more, a little bit less expensive, okay? But at, at the end, it's going to be in the $250, $300 a month range. I'm going to show you exactly how much it is, and if it sounds like a good fit, then uh, you can sign off on the agreement. We'll do business, and if you don't feel like it's a good fit, then we won't. I'm actually not even going to measure the windows because I don't. it doesn't matter how big the windows are if you end up doing business with us. I'll send my guy back over to measure them so we can get them ordered from the factory. But the whole thing's going to take about 15, 20, 30 minutes, something like that. Uh, and uh, I'll just be in and out. And if, if it ends up we can do business, great. If it doesn't end up we can do business, then I understand. Hey, it's no obligation. I'm not going to twist your arm. I'll be out there myself personally to meet with you. I'll, I'll be with you every step of the way. I oversee the installation. I'm the guy that's going to be there answering the phone if you've got a warranty question later. Does that sound good, John? Sounds pretty good. Now, here's what happens. He just fell in love with you. Not goofy, creepy, romantic love, but just, man, that's who I want to do business with. I freaking trust this guy. You just melted his heart, and that's what you want. He right. knows that you know. He knows that you care. He knows that you're real. He knows you're the authentic. He knows you've got the best deal. What else do you want him to know, my friend? Nothing. That's it. That's why people buy. They buy because they trust you. So, so do you do you recommend like a transfer, like ha keeping them on hold to transfer to to get to a salesperson or to take down a number and get called back? Probably the transfer, right? Well, I, just as quick as you can get it to them. That's what yeah. I mean. Let's put it to you this way: if if the call back is nine minutes later, they're probably changing a diaper, or driving their son to baseball, or watching reruns a fear factor or something gotcha okay okay I get it so so here's what I would spend my time and effort trying to figure out instead of trying to figure out how do I perfect Rodney Webb or how do I you know do all this other crap I would figure out how do I perfect getting my guy who's qualified on the phone with the prospect right away I would I would split atoms to figure that out. Gotcha. Okay? Because that one thing right there will make more difference than all of the other things that you could do combined. Okay. It's hard to do, though. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's better. Right, right. Frequently, the things that are better are not the easiest. That's why not everybody does it. <laughs> Gotcha. And that's, that, you know, that, that's why. Uh, None of this makes sense, though, until you fully appreciate the amount of courage it took that guy to make that phone call. And that's where we started this conversation. I said, why would somebody call you? And the answer is because his pain with his current situation finally exceeded his comfort level with his situation. So he's ready to buy right now. And because he's in the window shopping arena, it's a pretty good bet he knows nothing. And you're, you're getting a blank canvas that you can paint all, all you want on. I would not risk letting that get tainted by other salespeople, by other phone calls, by other websites, by any other kind of information. I want to hog the whole thing to myself. That's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I guess the takeaway for me is that uh, really appreciating what it took to get him to call. That's, well, uh, and, that's and because, <clears throat> because it took all that, understand, he's, he's open and willing to talk. And I made this point earlier on this call. There will never be a time when he is more ready to have that discussion than right that second. Wow. Good. A day and a half later at the sales appointment, he's got all the hesitations. He's got all the fears. He's got all the, you know, holy crap, what am I getting myself into? 
All of that is weighted on his shoulders. But see, here's how I overcome it. Hey, Dave, so what's making you call about windows today? Really, so how old's your home? How, how, are the windows original to the house? So what's wrong with the windows? What, what's, what made you call today instead of yesterday or last week? Huh. Oh, yeah, man, I hear you. <laughs> That's a problem. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So have you talked to anybody else? Are you calling around to get prices and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, this is, I don't know if you know this or not. It's kind of a weird industry, Windows. You know, I've been in it now for about 15 years. Yeah, and you know what? I've worked for a lot of companies that, oh, my gosh. I mean, some of the things that they'll do, the, the hard closes and, you know, pricing games, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, when I started this company 15 years ago, uh, I'd already been in the industry for about 11 years. I worked for some other companies, and you know what? I decided I'm going to take this company and I'm going to build it the way that actually respects people. I mean, that sounds crazy and it sounds kind of like a platitude, but the reality is a lot of these other companies don't. It's really kind of a money grab, and it's all about closing numbers. And you know, did you did you know that the average sales meeting is about two and a half to three hours? Did you know that? <laughs> you you didn't know that? Yeah, I I thought houses faster than that, and I've got guys. Sitting, you know, I, I've been through all the sales trainings. I've been through this in this industry. You know, most guys send their guys to week-long sales training boot camps that tells them exactly what to do minute by minute for the entire two and a half hour sales presentation. Can you believe that? <laughs> I know it's crazy. No, 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 no. We don't do that. Here's what we do. Blah 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 blah. Oh, by the way, our window, blah, 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 blah. Fiberglass, fiberglass, blah, blah, blah. Oh, vinyl, blah, plastic. Oh, chair in the window, blah, blah, blah. Right, just having a conversation with the guy. He gets halfway through that conversation, and he never once feels like you were selling him anything. Okay, so here's what I would do: I would go back and re-listen to this again. It's going to be posted later today, and uh, there's some great dialogue in there for you. Yeah, excellent. All right, hey, thanks for participating, man. It's great hey, to have you on the call today. One last thing, can you tell me what you think of the statement, uh, just say no to white plastic windows? Uh, I'll tell you what, it, maybe I'm overly sensitive and paranoid, but it, I, I really don't like the word white being in there. Okay. <laughs> just say no to white. <laughs> what? White what? White, <laughs> white plastic windows. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's okay. I mean... Yes, no, maybe. I don't really care. I don't think it's going to be a, a, that critical to your marketing campaign one way or the other. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Because the, the real conversation is in the conversation that we just had. Right. <clears throat> right. Anyway. Okay. Thank All you, right, John. Good to talk to you again. We'll see you. Okay. Bye now. Do I?